I want to sort of dive a little bit deeper into kind of what motivates each of you as a scientist. What is the thing, if you could sort of generalize it, that, that especially drives you, that you're most passionate about in terms of your work as a scientist, that, that makes you glad or joy, have joy in this profession? Paul? Well, I was born a physicist, so I don't, you know, it wasn't something I cultivated, so it's in my soul. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I just think it's magical that you can write down equations and discover stuff that nobody knew before, and I just uh, think it's fantastic. I wouldn't do anything else if I had life all over again. I often say to young people, because they never seem to know what to do, I say, there's really only one decision you need to make in your life. Do you do physics or something else? <laughs> <laughs> and if, you do, if it's something else, it really doesn't much matter. So you, you, you knew from, from when you were a kid that you were going to be a scientist? Absolutely, yeah. yeah the story I like to tell, seeing as I alluded to Margaret Thatcher, is that uh, uh, she gave me a star atlas when I was 16. And it's true. I have, have that atlas with her signature in it. Um, uh, and that's because she was the member of parliament of the school I went to, uh, the high school uh, in uh, Finchley in London. Um, and it was... Uh, what's called speech day there, prize day, and I got this prize for doing well in my exams. Um, and so I often say, well, that's when I knew that I wanted to do, be an astrophysicist or cosmologist or something. But it, it went back much, much earlier than that. As, as early as I can remember, I was just fascinated. What, I think what gets me, I mentioned about writing down equations and finding out things, hidden realities. So I was always fascinated by the idea that there's a lot of things going on that we don't see. I can remember as a small, very small child reading about atoms and uh, so many of them, you know, lined up and uh, they're too small to see. And I, th I thought, well, how do scientists know about atoms if you can't get a hold of one? In those days, you really couldn't do that. Can now. Um, but I was just fascinated that all these atoms are sort of inside us and, and we can't see them. And then invisible forces, uh, electricity and magnetism. You, could, you can sort of feel them. You can't see them. But, What's, what's happening here? And all that stuff and neutrinos that go right through us. And, um, you know, all the, and now we've got dark matter and dark energy. And I think it's just fantastic that there's all this sort of hidden stuff going on, but that we can make progress to un unravel it, understand it, and, and discover about it. Uh, the most recent being the Higgs boson. Hmm. Ard, what about you? What, what's it, sort of, if you could look deep inside, what is it that motivates you as a scientist? That's a good question. I just love science. So some, some of my friends and colleagues do science because they think it's going to improve human life. And so they might work on something that, where that's more direct. I do more abstract work. So I still think, you know, indirectly, I'll, it might have a big impact. It might not. I may, I may never know. I think I'm largely just motivated because I think it's really cool. And I can't believe that I'm so lucky that somebody would pay me money to think about this stuff. And so... I pinch myself every day. <laughs> um, you know, I don't, it's not like I have to go in, that somebody has to say to me, oh, you know, got to go into work, got to go do some research. You know, it's like I'm thinking about it all the time. But what, what, it, what but, is so cool about it? Well, so this is an interesting thing. Almost every scientist you speak to, once they get into the little thing they do, it turns out to be really cool. It's like you look at something, so currently I'm working on, um, so I've moved from kind of quantum physics to thinking about life, and I'm trying to use ideas from physics to understand life. And, Life is just an unbelievably fascinating, complicated thing, and you don't understand it. And I have these. So I'm now currently I'm using ideas from computer science to think about evolution, and I just think it's really incredibly cool. It's like so beautiful. It's all inter interconnected. You discover these things. It's just a very fun thing to do. And I realize, you know, you know, being a physicist is always you know great at cocktail parties. Probably not this cocktail party, but other ones. You know, you stay. You know, what do you do? Your physics kind of ends the conversation. <laughs> So I used to say to people in that case, you know, I worry about it so you don't have to. <laughs> um, but I just love it. And I think that kind of unique, you know, science is a, is a competitive field because lots of people want to do it. It's also um, difficult sometimes. You have to work hard, long hours. And so you have to really love it, I think, if you want to go on. But there are, it's very fortunate. You know, and you'll, in my department, we have a bunch of retired fellows who are in there. So previous academics were in the 1780s, they still come in all the time. And they, they could go off and play golf or tend the gardens, and they do that as well. But they just love physics, and they love coming. And they talk to me sometimes about, what, is, what are you doing? And they get all excited about it. And I think, yeah, when I'm 80 years old, I want to still be doing something like that that I love. So you know, why do people love something? People love very different things. Um, my father is a botanist, and he loves tropical trees. And 
he can talk to me for hours and hours and hours about um, plants and it's just something he just loves. And I, I'm very lucky, very fortunate that I live in a time when I, I can do this professionally. You know, a few generations ago, I'd have to be independently wealthy to do this. So I'm very fortunate, live at a fortunate time. Lucia? You know, topically, I think um, I'm very motivated by the search for life. Um, I think it's one of the most profound questions, um, whether, whether it's out there and whether we'll find it. Um, as far as, you know, the day-to-day -day of being a scientist, I'm very, uh, I'm, I'm very motivated by the process of it. I like, um, you know, as both of you touched on, the fact that any of it is comprehensible at all um, is really quite amazing. Um, and, you know, I think part of uh, the motivation for me as well is that uh, I do, like I mentioned, a lot of public communication. And so, you know, I feel that uh, the scientific background I have has really given me um, an enriched experience of my day to day and my um, appreciation of the world around me or the cosmos around me even. Um, and so I'm very motivated by an urge to share that with people and to bring them into part of that process. Not necessarily um, to turn everyone into a scientist, because I think that's a mistake. Not everybody wants to be a scientist. But this is a human undertaking that should be something that anyone can participate in if they want or to appreciate um, its output in the same way that we appreciate things like literature and art um, in the world. And so, yeah, I'd say those are the big ones for me.